good afternoon everyone so at the outset i invite all of you for this session uh, motivational session by a successful entrepreneur that's the title that we have decided so as in as the name itself indicates this is a session to motivate all of us to motivate ourselves and this will be motivation session will be given by a successful entrepreneur his uh, name is mr safar rahman so he is incubated at our uh, technology business incubator of padmati mahilaya please mute yourself otherwise we will delete you from the conference please mute yourself otherwise we will remove you from this conference except the speaker no one should uh, unmute yourself please please mute yourself yeah so this is a motivational session uh, by a successful entrepreneur and then his name is safar rahman so he is the co-founder of company startup called as recycle nest he is from chennai so i don't want to give more details about what he has been doing so only i just want to introduce him that he is a startup founder incubated at technology business incubator of our padmavati mahila vishwavidyalayam and then he we have funded him around 25 lakhs for the idea that he has generated so this is a motivational uh, speech so to end session so you can also see that if you have an any innovative idea if you feel that is addressing the unmet need of society if you feel that is helping someone or did if you feel that is helping in the improving the quality of your product or if you feel it is reducing the cost of your product without compromising on the quality please do approach us please come to technology business incubator subhadmati mali vishwavidyalayam we will be very happy to assist you will 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 give uh, we can mentor you we can train you we can provide finance funding the project is good we can help you in patent filing we can help you in we'll provide you space for you to work here we'll help you in networking we'll help you in promoting your products in various exhibitions and so on so this is being arranged as a part of on behalf of the institution innovation council of sri padmavati mahila vishwavidyalaya this organized by technology business incubator i thank our vice chancellor uh, our registrar and all the other uh, senior faculty members and i and the uh, vice president and convener kokaneer of iisc of padmavati mahila vishwavidyalaya for having given us this opportunity to conduct this session so with this i hand over to mr safar rahman uh, mr uh, safar rahman please take over and i request you to kindly give a, give a really a motivational speech so that taking you as an example i want at least some, few of them should get motivated by listening to this this thing and then they should take up innovation entrepreneurship as an alternate career pathway thank you very much for the opportunity given and uh, uh, over to safar ram thank you uh, i hope i'm audible everyone yeah, yeah you are audible and you are very clear please go ahead uh good afternoon everyone uh, first of all uh, thank you ssi tbi uh, and so yes, suffer, and, suffer, suffer. yeah uh, suffer one second sorry to real intern i apologize i request all of you to put on your uh, video please we'll just take one total photograph of the session and then uh, and then uh, and then we suffer we can start up so i request all of you to put on your video please just for a, for a few seconds we'll take a photograph and then we'll uh, we'll see and then we can take request all of you to put on your video please looks like the participants some of them have not heard my statement please put on your video ramaraman i'm happy number i'm i'm i hope any of them they'll get motivated <laughs> yeah me too yeah yeah this is one thing we'll just take okay. yeah uh, haryaran uh, please take a photograph of all of us
Are you here? Please indicate after you've taken the photograph, please. Are you here? I've taken the photograph. Mr. Aryan. One minute, sir. One minute, sir. Yeah. After you take the photograph, please indicate. Are you done? Done, sir. Done, sir. Yes, okay, sir. then. Okay, thank you. And then, uh, Mr. Safar, I think you touched the 100 mark. Congratulations before starting the session. And then over to you, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, everyone, again. And uh, first of all, I would like to express my thanks and gratitude to SSIA TBA uh, for this opportunity. Uh, it's an absolute privilege to connect with, let's say, a curious group of future innovators. Uh, I'm also grateful for to you know, SSI TBI for being a crucial part in my entrepreneurial journey. Uh, their support has been instrumental in bringing Recycle NXT, uh, and it's uh, an honor to give give back in this way. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Safar Rahman, and I'm the founder of Recycle NXT. You can see here. Uh, a sustainability-driven startup uh, focused on transforming waste uh, into valuable resource, starting with plastic waste. Uh, but before all of that, I was just someone uh, trying to figure out my path, just like you, just like the many of you, I guess. Uh, today, I'll be sharing my journey uh, from my engineering uh, engineering days to uh, you know founding Recycle NXT the challenges that I faced, uh, the lessons I've learned, uh, and the milestones that we've achieved and hopefully to achieve in the future. Uh, I, I hope and sincerely hope and believe that the session will inspire you guys and maybe encourage uh, some of you to uh, take up entrepreneurship and uh, you know uh, turn your ideas into new, powerful, and impactful ventures in the future. Uh, I would like to, this to be a two-way conversation. I don't know how possible it is. Um, uh, if you have questions or doubts in the middle of the session, please free, feel free to raise your hand or you know put, put your questions in the chat or your suggestions or whatever. Uh, we can have the interactions later on. Uh, also, I would love uh, to uh, the TBA team to provide my information, like email IDs or something to uh, the students. Uh, uh, if they need uh, some sort of mentorship or uh, ideas or suggestions from my end in the future, they can always contact me. Uh, okay, uh, I'll, I'll just start. Uh, before diving into my story, I just I just wanted to uh, ask how many of you have ever dreamed of building something or had an idea or a product in mind, uh, even if it is small, uh, you know, that you felt it could solve a big problem. Uh, since uh, if you have anything, you can raise your hand or I'll just continue. Uh, for me, I was also at your stage uh, not too long ago. Uh, let me share how it all started. Uh, for me, it all started with my uh, with my father, actually. Uh, he's not an engineer or a scientist or a, uh, or a professional in a traditional sense. Uh, he is a timber merchant. Uh, who studied, I think, up to eighth or ninth grade. Uh, but he has this immense curiosity towards uh, you know, space, stars, and galaxies. Uh, I, I've, I've always found it remarkable. I think it was during my fourth grade or something, uh, 1995, 96, he you know, insisted on me to watch a movie called Star Wars. I think you have heard about it in theaters. So, that was my first experience in seeing something you know, such humongous 
uh, nature and that instilled fascination into me and curiosity uh, funny thing is i don't like the movie much i still don't but uh, the the cgi and the you know the way the stars were shown the galaxies the the way that we can you know uh, uh, transport to another world that had an impact on me i would say uh the curiosity stayed within me and uh, this curiosity actually led me to uh, pursue mechanical engineering i love physics i love engineering i love space i love rocket science all these things uh, but mechanical engineering actually uh, to be honest gave me that foundation uh, for whatever that is me today it gave me the basics of everything uh, to design the to learn about physics it actually laid the uh, groundwork for my journey uh, and eventually entrepreneurship um, during my engineering uh, studies i focused on uh, mostly turbine related uh, projects and i actually graduated with first class with distinction and uh, i thought i was on my way to achieving dreams uh, after graduation i worked as a uh, design engineer the for a firm uh, that designs components of products for automotive uh, you know, uh, scooters and cars and stuff like that uh, so after graduating um, uh, i worked for a few companies uh, primarily in design and uh, you know development uh, while i was grateful for the opportunities that was given uh, and i learned a great deal uh, my first experience uh, that still stays in me the one not where i was acknowledged right uh, left the lasting impact i loved my job as a design engineer i uh, even though the salary was really modest at that time i genuinely enjoyed the uh, you know the process of turning ideas into reality um, one of the most memorable projects is um, you know, i was uh, i worked as a design engineer uh, and i was um, in charge of designing a body part of a well known scooter that you see uh, all around india today uh, on for a major brand so it was challenging and exciting work uh, i remember actually the long hours uh, the late nights of, at the office um, and this this constant push uh, uh, to get everything right right so so uh, every detail mattered for that so this design uh, this job actually had not on i mean the when the product was launched finally uh i mean i it had an immense sense of pride towards me but seeing it in the market it was actually bit as sweet uh but that is when i came to a realization that uh, although it is me who designed and everything it's the brand name that's going to come out right so uh i was proud of what i had achieved on the one hand i was proud on the other hand i realized that my name wouldn't be associated with it right uh, no one no no one would actually know the the uh, the hours i poured into making that a reality right? so uh this made me wonder uh, how many people are like me are out there uh, uh like people who 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 work tirelessly uh, behind the scenes right uh, creating uh, developing innovating uh but never get the uh, recognition right uh, it started me thinking like we could create a system where every contribution mattered where no one felt replaceable <clears throat> this thought kind of planted me the you know the, the seed for my entrepreneurial journey to be honest uh i wanted to make one thing clear here right? so there's nothing wrong with working for a company or many people uh uh thrive in that environment right or corporates right? and their work in fact drives the economy uh but for me it's just that i didn't fit into that mold uh, everyone has their own path uh, and for me uh, the path was actually entrepreneurship <coughs> <coughs> if you guys have felt uh, in in such a situation um in uh, somewhere in your life please do share uh now coming uh, with a uh, recycle next uh, the idea of uh, recycle nxt wasn't born overnight right uh, 
it was uh, during my work period i i became actively involved in um, uh, in an initiative started by a friend uh, like a, like an ngo so we focused on educating and empowering underprivileged kids uh, you know conducting uh, extracurricular classes for them uh, for free and uh, teaching them fun projects you know science related stuff uh, and the, this this initiative not only extended um, not only uh, was where we uh, like uh, uh, it towards only educating the underprivileged kids but we also extended the ideas uh, beyond the children's homes like we participated in uh, the beach and lake cleanups in chennai primarily uh, at at first it felt like really impactful uh, we are removing waste uh, creating awareness and uh, you know uh, making making in fact a visible difference in the society right uh, but over time um, i started noticing something uh, troubling no matter how many cleanups uh, we participate or we take part or uh, we conduct uh, the waste kept coming back right so it's not the awareness uh, this this made me pause and reflect like uh, why wasn't this solving the problem right then uh it hit me clean up cleanups basically address the symptoms uh but not the cause uh if we truly wanted to make an impact um uh, we have to have an upstream and rethink how uh, you know society consumes uh discards and recycles so that reflection sparked an idea uh you know what if we could create something valuable uh So create some sort of value, uh, you know, uh, uh, out of waste, uh, something that wasn't just functional uh, but also inspired. Uh, that's when the concept of you know re- uh, using uh, recycled pet bottles uh, to make products came into focus. Uh, it was just it wasn't just about reducing waste. You see, it was about um, showing people that uh, sustainability can be uh, stylish and impactful. Uh, it was about uh, uh, basically changing perceptions and you know encouraging conscious choices uh let me show you what i mean by that so this uh basically is our uh, uh, first product product it's called the momentum pack our very first product it's not just a bag uh, it's a statement basically uh, each bag represents around 25 recycled pet bottles uh which uh, we stop from entering landfills uh it's stylish functional and most importantly uh, sustainable we designed it to prove uh, you know uh, sustainability doesn't mean um, uh, compromising quality or style uh, it's a bag that professional students and you know travelers can use probably uh, knowing they they're tr- contributing to something uh, bigger uh like turning this idea into a reality uh, required support and uh, that's where uh, ssi tbi uh, played a vital role uh, they provided the funding uh, we needed to manufacture the bags uh, from recycled pet bottles but more importantly they actually believed in our vision uh, their their support actually gave us the push to move from you know just conception uh, to execution it wasn't just financial right it was a validation of our idea that the change uh, we wanted to bring uh now i'd like to have an optional session where like how many of you think that india recycles most its plastic waste like uh, how how much percentage do you think it is it's actually less than 10% 8% to be exact uh now here's the kicker right uh i'm only talking about plastic waste uh within that uh there are so many variants like a pet sdp ldp and many more in fact and then there is glass waste then there is paper waste electronics food waste the list goes on when you think about it this way the it's not it's not really waste anymore right it's just underutilized resources uh, and that's where we saw an opportunity to turn what seen as waste into something valuable uh this on this journey actually had we have we've had our lesson and vision for this so uh, there are three primary lessons that i have learned during this journey and uh, 
I would like to explain to you. Uh, one primary thing is like uh, start small, uh, but you can dream big. Uh, when I started Recycle NXT, we I didn't have the uh, you know the large scale operations in mind. It just began with a simple idea, just to turn waste into value. That was the whole focus, right? The first step was small, uh, you know, we tried it, tested, uh, you know, try after making the product, we tested it again uh, around for six months or so. Uh, but the dream was big, right? To, to, to build a company uh, that could redefine how we value this. So uh, dreaming big doesn't mean ignoring the small steps. It's the small steps that paves the way. Uh, second point would be, uh, do not fear failure. Uh, every setback, uh, is a chance to learn. Like, uh, I'll be honest, we've had so many failures. So, uh, like, uh, like to the partnership that didn't go through, uh, the materials that didn't match, uh, and even, even the products at the initial stage, it didn't meet our expectations, right? So, but every time something didn't work, uh, it taught us what to do better. Failure is not actually the opposite of success. Instead, it's just part of it. Uh, the third point would be uh, focus on impact, not just profit. Uh, no, I, I'm not saying you shouldn't completely negate profit or anything. Uh, profit should be there in your mind. But uh, for us, it's we are not we are not just trying to sell products, right? We are solving a problem, and when we focus on those <clears throat> the the impact that we create, profit becomes a byproduct, right? It will eventually come through. Uh, our mission was to create value, uh, not just for the customers, but also for the planet. Uh, like for for a, for a, for instance, like the the bag, for example, it's just not bags, right? Uh, they are statements of sustainability. They're proof that you can um, uh, combine style, functionality, and environmental responsibility in just one product. Uh, having said that, we do have a mission. Uh, it doesn't stop at making sustainable products like a dense bag. Our goal is to, um, uh, how do you say, redefine uh, what we think about waste entirely by building systems uh, that promote transparency, uh, accountability, and sustainability. Like we aim to go um, beyond products and tackle the root cause of uh, you know, waste. Uh, from traceability systems um, uh, to reverse logistics, uh, we are closing the loop on this. We're trying to close the loop on this. That's our vision exactly. Embracing the principle of a circular economy, uh, we strive to you know uh, transform this waste into valuable resource, proving that nothing truly goes to waste. So, yeah, if you are sitting here with an idea or a dream, uh, don't wait for the perfect moment. Uh, it doesn't exist. Like, uh, start where you are, uh, use what you have, and you know, uh, take that first step. Uh, thank you for listening to my journey. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. So thank you. You have ended your motivation in a short time. Sorry? Yeah, you ended your motivational journey in a short time. Yeah, I mean, okay. I didn't want so, to make okay. it too long so that they get bored of it. I wanted yeah, to yeah. be interactive, but uh, anyway. now, now, now I want the uh, participants to uh, open up and ask any questions uh, so that uh, we can answer. Okay, so my, my, my first question is, is your bag uh, completely that what you're making is only made from the plastic bottle or something else you're adding? Uh, something uh, like uh, that? Uh, some, certain parts are virgin polymers. So certain parts we cannot do. We, we can, but we don't have the means to do it uh, at the moment financially. But so, we will so out of the new laptop bag, what would be the percentage? Sorry? Uh, it, around 70, 75% of the bags are made from recycled. 75% is recycled from the reference plastic. Yes, yes, yes. 
and and you are you are adding some from from class also uh, into that uh we have so this portion of the bag right so this portion of the bag is actually uh 65 35 ratio of uh, plastic bottles and recycled cotton okay so you know 65% is plastic bottle 35 is yes yes, yes. The recycled cotton recycled cotton yes cotton so and what about can just show the bag again so what about the back side and the upper side and all that no no all those are uh, plus uh, recycled pet bottles sir recycle so, only so you see this belt for example that's not recycled please. no no we're i can understand on, yeah we are working on that and uh, the zips the materials here for the zip that is also we are working on that uh, and there is this cushioning inside that also is not recycled so those are the areas that we are working on next so, so in the total bag around 70% is recyclable yes yes 30% is from the Uh, uh, from the virgin, virgin plastic. Yes, yes. And uh, this from the recycled plastic bottle, 75%. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. And then how do you think about the business model for you? So how do you think uh, your orders and how many bags you can make per month and how many things you can sell per month? Uh, at the moment, we have the capacity to make 250 bags per month. We have the means. Uh, 50, just, yes. so we have uh, the the product has the brand has been launched only now we were doing a lot of uh, testing you know uh, back and forth and uh, hopefully we sh- we will be able to achieve that kind of sales every month we are uh, our uh, hope is to have at least 500 bag sales every month the initial target would be 500 bags every month yes okay so we are, i think we should uh, we plan to launch your product shortly i think we will invite you next month or so we will we'll launch your product here we we'll launch your product here so that and then for students if we can give concession and so if, i think uh, we'll... initially at the, uh, immediately if there are a, a, any students or interns who would like to take uh, join the company like work from home itself like as interns in the fashion design or you know accessories design Yeah, you know, because we have a. Uh, I think I think, I think uh, when you are coming, no, no, when you are coming here, because we yeah. have a fashion uh, fashion technology department yeah. also, and it is very well appreciated. Yeah. So they 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 do a lot of mini and all things. I understand. Uh, yeah. I have not gone there. So I think uh, with this we can definitely yeah uh, sure. see uh, what all can help it. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And then uh, any other doubts from other participants, please. i want participants to ask more questions to him so that you will get more more motivated so no questions from 98 participants or 97 or 96 actually myself and uh, suffer excluding someone else so i want uh, the participants to be ah uh, yeah uh, so divija has asked about uh, uh, advancement technology and ai what role do you see them playing in the future uh to be honest we are also in fact take uh, taken up that space we are working on something where we plan to utilize uh, ai for waste segregations right so we have something called collection points where it's not just just any bins or anything uh, which will the ai will be utilized to sort out waste in and categorize it accordingly and then uh, uh, before ending up in landfills uh, we can take it and we can utilize the recyclables or recyclable waste into and transform it to something else so we are working on that uh it it has a huge role to be honest ai uh, can be of immense help in the waste management sector we are working on something if you have any idea we can of course call up yeah so you are working on uh, can you repeat what you have been doing no we are we are just thinking of uh, uh, how do we make the collection right collections of the waste uh, more uh, streamlined so we we plan to use ai in that <clears throat> 
Okay. How can we reduce, or is there any chance to recycle medical medical waste? Uh, at the moment, it's incineration only, uh, because the the bacteria or the you know the, as the for example the medic the 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 products that is used in the medical field uh, after a surgery for example if the blood is still there uh, the bacteria starts creeping in within minutes so uh, the research is going on still going on but uh, at the moment it's just incineration you know getting energy from uh, burning it up so that is a good process only to do it's not completely bad but in terms of carbon emission uh, it does emit a lot so there are works or research that's happening in that segment to uh, to how do you say to reduce the carbon emission or to bring out more energy possible uh, without being uh, a big pollutant the process of making the product is not affecting the environment no in fact recycling uh, compared to as opposed to virgin polymers if you use recycled uh, items uh, you are saving around uh, 60% of energy and then yeah. you're saving landfills that uh, meaning a, a big area and the process, process itself process is like you are reducing two process, process in between right so you have to convert the oil to plus the petrol and then the petrol to plastics and then the plastics to the pellets and then so the the the, the oil to petrol to plastics that completely is uh, wiped out right you are just using you re, re utilizing the existing plastic so the energy saved in this is huge uh, how to attract customers and handle market according to the competition uh, we have to actually follow our competitors how they did it uh, we are trying that method then uh, we didn't want to focus more on running ads completely you know and uh, rely upon ads so we wanted to uh, showcase the product and uh, so we wanted to build the story first right uh, instead of so if if i had finished the bag and then told them like okay this is a new bag so then it, it becomes just a bag right but if i have the story in mind like i have saved 50000 plastic bottles from entering landfills and then talk about the 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 hazardous you know, things that would have had if the if the bottles were in safe and something beautiful from that trash can be made and then you show the bag it makes a difference right so that's where we we try to be we want to uh, build the story first uh, you know circulate the story first and then show the bag right so that's how we are going it I, it varies from person so marketing is like a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's like a C, right? So you have to uh, figure out your way. You have, to, and you know your product well more than others. So uh, with that and with the right team, you you just have to figure out. It. Thank you, Sujita. So anyone else? Uh, yeah, Sujita has asked uh, competitors. Yeah, there are multiple competitors. Uh, I mean, the a bag company itself is a competitor for us, right? So, uh, so we, 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 we want to like, we we want to make sure that sustainability sustainability is sustainable luxury is not very expensive. That's that's the idea behind this, right? If you if you if you take anything for example right if if sustainability word comes into play right let's say uh, a, a normal shampoo or uh, you know you know sustainable like organic kind of shampoo then it becomes very expensive it becomes a luxury right uh, so we want to break that thing so we wanted to have products in every um, you know every cost. Uh, possible uh, by being sustainable. So, so uh, this is this is the idea. Like uh, uh, in terms of competitors, this is again. Like I said, we have started with only one product, but we have products lined up. 
and it, it will cater to all uh, kinds of customers. The, the, the luxury customers who want, you know, very expensive, good looking, like really they're, they're ready to spend more. We have actually bags for that as well. Uh, sir, one more question from my name. Uh, and biodegradable as bioplastic from, huh. So uh, like, uh, it's not biodegradable, right? But bio, it's still plastic. It's just recycled plastics. We have found a way to recycle it again and again, that's all. So uh, we, what we are doing is like, uh, I'll tell you, I'll, I, I'll, I'll tell you a small statistics, which will help you understand the magnitude of this problem, right? Uh, we aim to save 1 million plastic bottles in two or three years. Uh, that is a challenge that we're facing, but we are trying for that. But Coke alone, Coke, just Coke alone sells 1 billion plastic bottles every day. So you can imagine the, the, the magnitude at the rate at which plastic bottles are getting into the land. So uh, th there needs to be a way to sort this out. Right? So we have resources in the landfills. So that needs to be, uh, you know, uh, taken and then uh, utilized. Uh, as for biodegradables, uh, like um, there are companies which which are, which which uh, are trying to bring biodegradable plastics and uh, 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 you know into the market. But the thing is, uh, scaling up is a problem. Manufacturing at a, such a huge, uh, 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 you know, it's a huge uh, number, it, that's another problem. If that is a problem, what happens is like uh, the politics come into play or, you know, people, uh, they'll, they'll not be 100% biodegradable. They'll start adding other stuff. So uh, there are uh, some integrities in that manner. So that's where the situation is right now. Ultimately, there is no 100% good solutions, but we are trying our best. Uh, can you state one more surprising or let's say an unexpected challenges that you have faced while trying to innovate in the research? Uh, unexpected was the, uh, we have, uh, how do you say, like uh, this, the whole recycling or waste system uh, is not properly in place. So let's, I'll, I'll take it to the lowest of, uh, how do you say, the, the easiest of, uh, I mean, layman of series, like the, the rat pickers, right? Uh, they get X amount of money for uh, collecting plastics. Uh, I mean, they'll give you, like, if you go, uh, you know, supply them with plastic bottles or from your household, like, if you give them, uh, they'll give you a certain amount of money. X depends on, on the area or whatever. But if you go to them and then say, like, uh, I'll give you more, right, uh, than what they are getting, uh, they'll not be willing to... Uh, collaborate with you because their livelihood is at stake. Like the, the, the person to whom they are supplying the waste to, uh, it's, it gets completely political. So it was unexpected and we genuinely wanted to help those people. And when we approached them, uh, we actually got a negative answer. From them. So we didn't know what to, we were at first like, okay, uh, how do you deal with this, right? So it has to come from the government side of things. You know, the, the streamlining has to happen uh, properly. Uh, it's still an issue. So, yeah, uh, we are trying to, so for us, the primary focus is on customer. See, me as a person or anyone else for that matter, people in the urban area are primarily responsible for the whole, for the whole you know, landfill issues that's happening around the world, right? We didn't properly segregate or you know put it in the bin or we just threw it away. This is what happens like over the course of years. So my my way of thinking is like we can make the change one at a time. So introduce them aware, bring awareness at home by introducing beautiful products at household. So this way the 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 mentality changes. This is how I'm taking it.
thank you. But in today's generation, the most waste generating are increasing rapidly sanitary pads or diapers, and there's so many eco friendly pads are manufactured through banana waste. Like, how can or how many products we can prepare due to health and human planners? And what are the ways to promote people to use them to explain benefits? Do we need any? Ah, uh, yeah, this, this is like I said, right? Sanitary pads uh, is similar to the, uh, uh, you know, the medical uh, thing again. Uh, you can't recycle it because uh, the bacteria starts affecting immediately. So uh, incineration is the way to go. Uh, people are uh, coming up with eco-friendly pads and anything. So the issue again here is uh, in the startup space, how we define this is like, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about the brand called Mama Earth, right? Uh, Mama Earth at, at first were a completely sustainable company, right? So FMCG company, but then sustainability was the core issue. But then once the investment start came into play and then uh, the brand grew like exponentially, uh, their sustainability focus reduced. In fact, they started, uh, it's not completely sustainable anymore. It's not completely organic anymore. Uh, their way of um, uh, stopping the plastic waste was to, uh, based on the number of products that they sell, they'll plant trees. So they're not directly dealing with the waste that is caused by them, right? So these kind of issues come into play. So that's why I said like, uh, the whole, it's not just manpower, uh, it's not just uh, enough promotion. Uh, everything has to come into play and then uh, figure out uh, uh, the best way possible to sort this out. Uh, eco friendly pads are, I mean, gaining momentum now. Like, uh, uh, there are so many people who use that. And uh, again, the problem is uh, transferring from the already used thing from to this because of the cost and everything that is a big challenge so uh, people are marketing it like crazy but uh, i don't know how uh, this but it's a good good option like uh, even if you as someone starts today uh, bring out some minor change to the existing you know uh, startup ideas like eco friendly pads uh, bring one fine tune change right uh, that itself will be able, you will be able to you know succeed like you have customers i think that's it Yeah, uh, I think I think you answered all the queries. So, uh, any more queries, please? Uh, I'm glad. Yeah. One more I question. Think, yeah. Any challenges that you face through this journey? Oh, uh, yeah. Funding was a big issue, and uh, we uh, fortunately we we contacted a society there and we got that. Uh, but it's not enough, right? I mean, it's uh, 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 like there is always uh, like a, one of my mentors used to say like funding, it's, it's like a full-time job. Like if you want to scale and expand, then there's no stopping. Right? We have to go for the next steps. Yeah, but I mean, see, it's uh, everything is a challenge and it's it's up to you right too so how you navigate it through is what matters the most and uh what you've got to understand or realize is uh you you started you you decided to build this idea uh, stick on to it right stick on to the the original uh cause right why as to why you've started this uh there will be like so many negatives so many negative uh, uh, vibes and messages and uh, uh, from many places so uh, don't let that get you down if you genuinely feel 
like this is going to solve a particular problem uh, then you are the best person to go and uh, have patience right so uh, don't just don't give it up like uh, at this moment me personally i would feel like uh, in the sustainability space uh, everyone is welcome right uh, because we need ideas ev- from everywhere and it's it's not it's not uh see climate change it's it's not a, it's not a, a future thing anymore it's happening right now right and every small uh, contribution matters in this space so uh, don't feel uh, like okay my idea is not very uh the high fi or you know something like that no need of like that you, you whatever idea that you have in mind uh, go ahead with it if you feel it genuinely solves a problem uh then you should you should continue with it. like but always always um have some mentors for you right uh since you are you guys are in college and things uh, uh find your professor you know have him as a mentor uh talk to discuss the uh, uh you know the, the idea that you have uh understand the problem first right uh, this is a genuine problem and there needs to be a solution for this this has Your, your problem has to be defined first the problem has to be uh, exact and you know then you'll get the solution then then you discuss with your mentor and then uh, uh, try to figure out a, uh, uh, you know uh, the technicalities in it how to solve it up all these things how can your business encourage people to switch to low cost solution there are many options and ways to handle uh mine uh i like i said i wouldn't i wouldn't tell others to not use their existing bags or the bags that they like right you can't make everyone like my bags it's aesthetics is a is an important factor i irrespective of the sustainability no, not everyone is interested in sustainability you understand so uh you you talk to someone like for example let's say someone who's uh, who uses uh, let's say one particular brand of uh, shampoo like uh, clinic all clear is the one that he uh, used for his life you know throughout his life and then you go tomorrow and then you say like okay i have this mama earth thing uh, which is cheaper let's say it's cheaper than your clinic all clear and it is beneficial because it's sustainable and he wouldn't if he wouldn't like no i'm, I'm happy with my product like right? so because it it serves his purpose right that particular one so you telling them you you shouldn't tell them like okay uh this is bad so use mine no that's not the way to go right so aesthetics aesthetics have works uh in different ways for different people so when i say like okay this is the best bag there is and you shouldn't use any no that doesn't work like that you have to penetrate into the market through in your own way and then gradually change you know that's how you go it you you don't uh, you don't encourage people to switch to you don't encourage everyone to switch to this it's difficult you can't you can't please everyone so t- give it to the right people then you it, it spreads thing that's how i, I would go <laughs> I hope you have answered uh, all the queries, Prabhupada. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, there are any more queries. Um. Uh, the last two minutes. Any more queries? So. Uh, I think with this, I, I requested Dr. Prakriti to take over and propose the vote of thanks. Ah, uh, there's one more question that. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Please, 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 please. Plastic, but due to plastic, so many birds, it's helping agriculture and environment existing. Ah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this. See, this is what I'm t- uh, talking about, right? So, uh, we can't, uh, we cannot avoid plastic completely. Uh, I, I think one more person asked for biodegradable plastic, right? So, you can't completely eliminate plastic and. uh you know turn into biodegradable it's not a possibility plastic is important right so 
what we what we as a sustainability company or what the real problem is plastics ending up in landfills right so we want to reduce that we want to solve that crisis this is the issue so when you say like uh, the plastic helps in agriculture and with all the birds uh, i'm guessing you are telling about the feeding or the whatever uh, tanks or whatever we can always look for products that are you know recycled plastics you know made from existing plastics that 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 is in the landfill or that will end up in the landfill you know these kind these are problems and solutions that you can come up with the the ultimately the main issue is not plastic in itself the way we use plastic and the way the plastics are uh, discarded so we need to find a solution here that's all i think that answers yeah i think now i request uh, dr prakriti to take over please good afternoon everyone it's an honor to deliver vote of thanks for this inspiring and insightful session what we have just witnessed i would like to thank our vc vice chancellor professor v uma madam and uh, registrar n rajini madam and uh, chief executive officer of site tbi dr j suri kumar sir and institutional innovation council members for guiding us to organize this session i would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to mr safar rahman for joining us today and sharing his remarkable journey mr safar rahman's story of founding recycle next and transforming it to a successful startup is nothing short of extraordinary the passion perseverance and innovation that he has shown in building a company focused on sustainability and waste management have left us all inspired his words have not only motivated us but have also given us fresh perspective on how challenges can be turned into opportunities in addition to the valuable insights he shared about the startup ecosystem and the importance of resilience his focus on environmental responsibility is a crucial reminder that businesses today must not only aim for profitability but also contribute to a sustainable future the practical advice he offered on scaling a business navigating failure and the importance of staying true to one's vision will undoubtedly guide many of us to move forward and finally i would like to thank the wonderful and enthusiastic audience thank you <laughs>